Hello, this is Kaylee Gonzalez with MLC CAD Systems. What I'm going to talk about today are what I think are 10 underutilized features of the SOLIDWORKS inspection standalone software. These could be enhancements that um, are not as well known. Perhaps people are not using um, that version as frequently, but these are things that I often get questions about. So I decided to put this video together to cover 10 of these features. Now, our first feature is auto extraction for PDFs. This was actually a 2023 enhancement. So inside of our inspection standalone, when we do create a new project, we can actually utilize PDFs. Now, when you do have PDFs that are exported from a CAD system, those export as searchable text. PDFs with searchable text, you can actually utilize the automatic extraction criteria. This is actually going to go through the PDF and it's going to add balloons for all of the items inside of the PDF. So all of your GD&T and your dimensions, it's gonna automatically populate your characteristic tree. In this way, we are actually seeing kind of a, a bridge between the add-in and the standalone with a lot of this automation in utilizing PDFs. So number two is a support for DXF, DWG, and native SOLIDWORKS drawing support. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples here. The first one is going to be starting a new project utilizing a DXF or DWG file. Now this is something that you can do in the standard or professional version of inspection. When I go ahead and open up a DWG file, again, I'm gonna have a couple of options. I can do an automatic extraction. Normally I prefer to do a manual extraction on DWGs and DXFs simply because I can be a little bit more specific. It's easy to grab too much information if you do the auto extraction. So this still doesn't take a lot of time. I can drag box, I can manually select items, and still within a couple of seconds, I can have my DWG and my first article inspected, my first article inspection report complete. Also, what I can do is utilize native SOLIDWORKS drawings. This is something available in the professional package, but I can just open a native SOLIDWORKS drawing file directly inside of Inspection Standalone, and I do not need SOLIDWORKS installed to utilize this feature. Again, I can do an auto extract. I can choose what I want to extract from my drawing, and once I have chosen my extraction criteria, I can click OK, and in just a couple of seconds, I have my characteristic tree populated, my drawing is ballooned, and I'm ready to go to finish up my report. SOLIDWORKS Inspection also has support for 3D file types. Now this is in the professional version. So native SOLIDWORKS files is something that is included with model-based definition or DIM expert data included, but native CATIA part files and CATIA products are supported as our PRT files. So here we see we have a file opened up in three-dimensional space and I have all of my model-based definition views that I can choose to utilize. Again, here I'm gonna use my automatic extraction criteria, and we can see how fast we're able to balloon this information. And again, all of that gets populated in my characteristic tree. Number four is going to be multiple numbering sequences. This is available in standard and professional, but it's only available in the standalone inspection product. Where you can access the settings for this is under your options and then underneath your characteristic section over on the left. Now there's a section for numbering sequences. I'm adding a 300 series to this. If you wanted this to be permanently part of your project, just make sure that you resave your project template, then the numbering sequences will be there going forward. But what this allows us to do is we can go ahead and start ballooning specific items. And if they do require a different numbering sequence, we can toggle back and forth between those sequences as needed. So I'll start with the default and I can just drag a box around these different dimensions. At any point, I can switch to my 100 series. I can switch to a 200 series and I can go back and forth that way and the numbering will just pick up wherever I left off. So if you do have the need to use different type of numbering series and sequences, that's something you can do inside of the 
inspection standalone product. So number five is gonna be rules for automatic characteristic identification. I'm gonna explain what that is first before I show you the settings. So if I have a specific classification on, for example, balloon number eight, this is set to incidental. If I set it to minor, notice how my balloon changed to a purple color. If I wanted this to be a major identification or classification, it changes shape and color. Same thing with critical dimensions and even uh, key dimensions as well. So this is something that you can customize so that the balloons automatically update to different colors and shapes as needed. Now where you can set up these rules is underneath your ballooning section in options. Here is where you can set the classification if you do want to have a prefix or a suffix, the balloon shape, the color, the text color, and the size. Again, once you have set everything up inside of your settings, make sure you resave your project template because that's how this is going to get saved for every project you utilize going forward. Now, the default classification is under your characteristic tab. So by default, mine is set to incidental. You could change that. Again, just make sure you save your template. So number six, is the ability to use both manual and automatic extraction techniques in the same project. I get asked this question multiple times, especially in regards to the add-in. Can't do it in the add-in as of yet, but we absolutely can do it inside of the standalone product. So sometimes we do run into situations where we may have a dimension or a note that doesn't fit into the normal extraction criteria that the software is expecting. And in that way, you could have one or two items that get missed from the automatic extraction portion. If we take a look at this, we actually have an example of that. I'm going to zoom in around balloon number 15 so we can see this a little bit more clearly. So we have balloon 15. That's actually part of the radius, though. And if I were to change the location of that balloon, there is actually a chamfer dimension behind it that did not get ballooned. Well, we can simply just go in and say, hey, I need to manually extract a dimension, and I'm going to extract the size and the angle separately. So we can specify that information. But notice how the numbering just gets added to the end. It doesn't redo your project. It doesn't start the ballooning over. It's just an extension of your project. So this is a great tool to really speed up the ballooning process and capturing those characteristics. Now, another example of when this could happen, as I mentioned previously, is with notes. Notice how I do have some notes here did not get included in the automatic extraction, but I can include this manually and even pick and choose which specific notes I want to include in the project. There are situations where we may not need all of them. So again, I was very excited when this was implemented into the software. It is something I get asked about frequently and it just makes the software easier than ever to use. So number seven is snapshots or screenshots during your Excel export. There's a couple of ways that this can be done. This is intended really for working with CAD files. So 3D CAD files or DWGs and DXFs. I'm going to show you an example with this CAD file that has MBD data. And this is already ballooned for us. But inside of the Excel extraction, notice that there's a snapshot section. This is including all of my MBD views, my annotation views. And I can really pick and choose exactly what I want to include. Once I click OK, SOLIDWORKS is going to actually grab like a series of screenshots. That's what it's doing now. And it's just going to automatically include them in our Excel file for export. Now, these are just included in their own tab. These are not three-dimensional. They're just 2D screenshots. But it does save a lot of time just to allow the system to do those tasks for you automatically rather than you grabbing specific screenshots all the time and having to repopulate this, especially when you have design changes. So number eight is measurement expert. This is something that would only be in the professional version because it deals specifically with measurement input. Now, the 
measurement expert is in the upper right, and I'm going to utilize click measure. What this allows you to do is just click on a balloon dimension in your drawing, and it's going to automatically correlate it and populate your measurement input column. It's going to associate it to the proper row and fill in the color coding. This is a great way to add items in in a way that's maybe more convenient for you. The order that we inspect things is often not the order that maybe things are ballooned, but this just allows you to correlate things very, very simply. We can also create additional columns inside of our measurement input. And inside of Quick Measure, you can make sure that you choose that column number to start populating the second column. So again, this is there to just really speed up any type of manual measurement import that you would have and correlating it to the proper row in your characteristic tree. So you don't have to constantly toggle back and forth manually between measurement input and your drawing. So number nine, we're gonna talk about notes. Now these are not notes that you would put, for example, on a drawing. This is an actual function inside of inspection that you can add a note right on top of your drawing. So for example, I could add a note that says, hey, balloons one and two are consistently failing any inspection test I put into it. Now that may or may not necessarily be an issue, but if I suspect that perhaps my method is maybe not accurate enough for that tolerance band, I could say, hey, maybe this should be remeasured actually using a CMM and then whoever operates that piece of equipment could go through and remeasure it. So notes are a great collaborative tool. You can customize these, you can change the color, you can change the font, you can change the size. So this is also something that you can double click on and edit. You can also delete the notes off at any point in time. So they're there just as a collaboration tool or even just to set reminders to yourself or notes on how something was, was completed. Now this last one's an easy one. You can undock your interface panels. I'm always surprised at how many people don't realize they can actually do this. The little push pins actually work a little bit different than SolidWorks CAD, but you can actually undock your characteristic panel and actually move this onto another monitor. If I'm working on a relatively large project, this is something that I will do. You can undock it, move it, really expand it, and you can also redock it at any point in time. You can do that with your side panels as well or your CMM import. You can really spread this out over two or three monitors and really increase your real estate as far as what you're looking at on your screen rather than having it be all condensed. So take a look at that. You can undock and redock your panels really at any point in time. So just to recap, PDF auto extraction, there's support for multiple file types, including native SOLIDWORKS files, multiple numbering sequences, automatic balloon changes. You can use both manual and automatic extraction methods, snapshots during Excel output, measurement expert notes, and of course, undocking your user interface panels. Check out some of our other existing tech tips such as using the grid, node explosion. These items here, we already have videos on our YouTube channel that cover these specific topics. So if you were looking for one of those, they already are there, please check out our YouTube channel for those. So thank you very much for going through these 10 features in SOLIDWORKS Inspection Standalone. Hope you found some good tips and tricks if you use inspection or are looking at inspection as a solution. If you have any questions, please contact us at mlc-cad.com. We'd love to hear from you.